So here we are. Uh, this is page 180, as I said. So these percent yield problems involve this formula, which is one of the things that ideally we've already done from um, the asynchronous remote on Monday. But just in case, it's this. It's actual yield over theoretical yield. Now we do multiply that by 100, turn it into percent. So um, the, the theoretical yield is typically going to be from stoichiometry. And this is going to be from the problem if you're doing a you know, workbook type problem. From the problem or from the lab. So like, like uh, Monday when, when we go and you're going to weigh this again. We got to wait for it to dry, right? You're going to weigh this again and you're going to see that's going to be your actual yield of chalk. How much chalk actually ended up in that, in that filter paper, okay? So this is the formula. As I said, this is related to some notes that were um, on that asynchronous remote period. Um, these problems, if you already kind of know how to do stoichiometry, they're going to be fine. There's just one more step and just a little bit of more information to sort through. Of course, if you don't know how to do stoichiometry, they're not going to be fine. But, you know, stuff starts to sink in. After you see it a certain number of times, it just might. So um, we'll see what happens. Anyway, so if this, this first equation here, it says balance equation. Just to, just to make our lives easy, I'm going to jump right to the balance equation here. So it's 2FEPO4. This is the top of page 180. 3NA2SO4. And then um, FE2SO4. 3 plus 2NA3PO4. Okay. So it says, if I perform this reaction with 25 grams of iron 3 phosphate in excess of sodium sulfate. Okay, so first of all, notice that's describing the reactants. And maybe if we don't know the names of these polytemic ions, or we're, we're not sure what these are even called. Hopefully, um, this, this is iron 3 phosphate, this one, okay? And again, even if we're not exactly sure what phosphate is or anything like that, hopefully knowing that these things are, are the reactants and knowing or looking up Fe on the periodic table can lead us to realize that this is the iron 3 phosphate right here. And it's reacted with an excess of this. Now we're going to get to that. That's our next topic. But don't worry about it for now, what that excess means. And you may have noticed it on some of the other problems too. It's just saying there's plenty of it. It's saying you got enough of that. Um, then it asks us the question, how many grams of iron 3 sulfate can I make? So again, can I make means it's one of the products. Fe is iron. It, it has to be that one. Even if we're not sure, again, what that SO4 is sulfate, this is the one we're trying to figure out. So nothing new yet. We're going to do a gram-to-gram -gram stoichiometry problem. We're going to start with the 25 grams of FePO4, and the um, we're going to find the grams of this. So I'm um, going to change this to moles. That's how I always start if I've got grams. And I'm going to do my train track. I'm going to look this up on the periodic table. Remember, do not use this too. Yeah, I'm just going to add up 1 Fe, 1 P, 1, uh, 4 oxygens. And I'm going to put that down here on the bottom, 150.82 grams. Remember, that's a mass when you look up on the periodic table. What is it the mass of? It's the mass of 1 mole of FePO4. Don't forget to attach the, um, to the mole unit specifically, attach what you're talking about. So unit grams cancel. Uh, next thing we always think about is the mole ratio. What is the ratio between these two things? This is where we use the coefficients. This is the only spot where we use the coefficients. Um, what goes up must come down. Moles of FePO4 is on top. It's going to be on the bottom of the next one. So this middle step here is where I'm using the coefficients. Remember, if there's no coefficient, it's an invisible one. Sorry, it's a little bit squeezed in there. Unit of mole FEPO4 cancels. And then so lastly, um, I'm going to add up the mass of this. Now, this might be the most challenging. In fact, uh, uh, on our final exam a few years ago, one of the most missed questions was just adding up the molar mass of something like this because it's pretty easy to make a mistake. Um, there are two FEs. 
How many um, S's? Three, good. How about oxygens? 12, three times four is 12. So two FEs, one S, 12 oxygens. Or you could, up, you could add up the mass of an SO4 and multiply that by three and then add it to two FEs. Either way, if we add it up properly, we get 399.91. Now remember, that is the mass of one mole of Fe2SO43, and it weighs 399.91 grams. So remember, what goes up must come down. So when you're adding up on the periodic table, it's grams. When I started with grams, I put grams on the bottom. But now that I'm in the unit of moles, I'm going to put the grams on top. And so anyway, we do all that. And again, nothing, nothing new so far. Now what this is, is that's the theoretical yield of iron 3 sulfate. In other words, that is the maximum possible, it is literally impossible to make more iron 3 sulfate than that. So that is our theoretical yield. question goes on to say, if 18.50 grams of iron 3 sulfate are actually collected when I do this, what is my percent yield? So this is the only part that's new is this last part right here, knowing what to do now, which is this. It's just like you're grading a test, okay? This is the maximum possible, like the maximum possible points on a test. That goes down here on the bottom. And then the 18.50 goes on top, multiply it by 100 to turn it into a percentage. And so it's about 55.82%. Now, just like on a test, that's not great, right? Well, depending on some reactions, actually, that might be uh, uh, considered good, depending on various factors. But I'd say generally that would not be considered great. And you'd be hoping for more. So like on our chalk lab, um, typically people can get above 90% yield relatively easily. Fun Questions about that one? Okay, uh, let's look at another one. So again, um, is that reaction balanced? Make sure to check that. Is it balanced? It's not. So always, always check that. You're probably going to get the question wrong. If you start with an equation that's not balanced, you might get lucky every once in a while. But we do need to put a two here to balance this thing. Okay, so like I said, um, it, it, these problems are the same, just a little bit more extra information to pick through and, and understand. So remember, we're going to do the actual yield over the theoretical, and we're going to multiply by 100 at the end. So it says 18 or 6, 15.65 grams of HCl is reacted with excess beryllium. So those are my reactants. After the completion of the reaction, 14.35 grams of beryllium chloride is collected. So that's what you want to be looking out for. The actual yield, it has to be one of the products, okay? And so look for words like that, collected, obtained, things like that. Um, something that gives you a clue as to what you're referring to. So that 14.35 is my actual yield, okay? So I got that part already. And notice it's of this stuff it's of this beryllium chloride right here. And I have to think about that because I have to do stoichiometry to get this theoretical yield. So what I'm saying is we want to point our stoichiometry. So we're going to start here. That's one place where people can get a little bit confused. We're going to start the stoichiometry here with the reactant. And I'm going to go to this. Even though the problem doesn't specifically say calculate the theoretical yield of beryllium chloride, I'm going to because how else will I compare to this 14.35 here? So, um, again, this is going to be a problem exactly like the last one in terms of pattern. I start with this mass here that I got, 15.65. And that's HCl. So I look up HCLs. Remember, we don't use this coefficient to one hydrogen plus one chlorine. That's a mass in grams, and that's going to go on the bottom because um, grams are on top of the previous thing. So periodic tables give you masses. And since grams is what we're starting with, we're going to put it down here. 
Next part is the mole ratio part, where I'm comparing this to this. There's a two in front of the HCL, so that goes down on the bottom. What goes up must come down. The invisible one on BECL2 goes here. It's hard to read. Lastly, um, now I'm going to use the periodic table again. One mole BCL2 goes on the bottom, and the mass of that, which is 79.91 grams, one BE plus two CLs. And that is going to go down here. That's my theoretical yield. That is the maximum possible amount of stuff that you can make. And I'm going to multiply it by 100. Turn it to a percent. Which is about 83.7. Questions about that? Okay, um, something to mention here, it is, it is completely impossible to get over 100% yield. So if you come down to this last step and you get over 100% yield, you need to check a little bit. Now, that's not to say that you could have experimental errors happen that make it seem like you get over 100% yield, but it's not possible, like for example, take a simple example. Suppose we measured this chalk right now. It's got a bunch of water in it. So even if you subtract out the mass of the filter paper, you're gonna get a mass of above two grams, but that's because there's a bunch of water in there. So um, it would seem like there's over 100% over yield, but it wouldn't really be more than two grams of chalk there because um, it is not possible to get more than 100% yield. So that's something to watch out for as you're doing the problems. Um, Anyway, what? let's skip number three for right now. I'm actually going to say goodbye to our video watching friends here.